Alright guys, I'm going to make a very amateur and unrehearsed video here. Um, on the forum, some of you have probably seen that I've been recommending this for people that want a good tripod but don't want to spend a ton of money. This is the, the Slick U8000. I think I bought mine probably about 10 years ago, but it's been a great, uh, great tripod. Uh, you can see about how big it is, maybe about two feet long, and it's got three section legs. But this is how it works. So we have the head here. This is in storage mode, so I just loosen this up, and that's the elevation. Turn that, and it locks. This one here is for the swivel. That's locked. Loosen it up, and it swivels. Uh, one thing I like about this too is it's kind of a variable tension. So if you have a real light camera on there, you want to be able to make adjustments. You just kind of snug it down. It's not going to flop over or anything. And then um, we've got this nut here on the center column. And then this crank folds out and you can jack this up. Uh, nice lightweight. So when you store it, you just crank it down, uh, lock that, fold this over, loosen this up, loosen this up. Kind of fold that in so it's kind of tucked in there. Lock that. And then you have kind of a nice compact package. Very light, just a couple of pounds. Uh, another thing about it, it's only 45 bucks. Uh, but I'm going to try and show you it's, it's nice and sturdy too. So first we start with the legs. There's two sections, so flip out these two things to unlock them. Extend them, lock them. This is the uh, the tripod that I think is probably most most often imitated by the, the cheapies at Best Buy. So then, as you can see, that brings it up to about I don't know mid chest level on me. I'm about five foot eight or so. So see that brings it up to this level. If I loosen this up, crank up the center column. It brings the camera up to my eye level. And I'll show you here. I'll mount up a digital SLR. See how easy that was to mount up. And then lock the column. Uh, one thing to remember to lock your tilt, because otherwise you, you forget it's just going to slam forward and you'll feel like an idiot. So you lock that. Now you can. Once you get that locked, you can pan. You know, if you're just you know sports game or whatever, shooting video, you can just pan, and you know you're not going to be shaking around. Um, and then there's also this little guy in the back. I forgot to show you right here. You loosen that up, and the the base flips vertical also. So it's also good for vertical shots. Now the head, uh, the head itself here. Zoom in a little bit now that it's mounted up. The head here is all plastic. Uh, it's a thick plastic. It's pretty rugged. If you don't, you know, abuse the thing, it's not going to crap out on you. Like I said, I've had it for ten years. Yeah, maybe you saw when I was showing you the bottom of the feet. There's still mud on there from the last time I was out. Uh, but it's plastic, but very solid. Uh, one thing, if you're if you're looking at like a, a real expensive tripod, like a Bogan or something, uh, one way it'll be better is when you have this column extended such that the camera is at your eye level. There's a little bit of wobble in the column. Um, you know, if you're just gentle and you push the push the shutter release, it's no big deal. Um, but if you really want it to be steady, then the way to do that is to bring it down a little bit lower. And if you have an SLR or a camera or whatever with an articulated screen so that you can have it at a, at a lower level and shoot from that level. At this level, with, with everything locked down, I maintain that this tripod is as strong as anything that costs $300. It's when you get it up to, to eye level with this, this column gets longer and longer, that's where it starts to, uh, to show its weakness. But you know what, if you 
if you have the right expectations going into it, you won't be disappointed. It's a great camera. If you're not shooting uh, moving subjects, what you can do is set your self timer. Um, and a lot of cameras now have a programmable self timer. So on this one, I can set the self timer to two seconds, and you know I can touch it off here. And after the two seconds, then the, you know if there's any wobble at all, it's not going to be wobbling anymore when it goes off. It'll be rock solid. So it's all about knowing your equipment. I'll show you something else here. Maybe you noticed how easy it was to mount this up, but this tripod has a, a quick release shoe. So you, you screw that end to the bottom of the camera with a coin or a Swiss Army knife screwdriver like I use. These are about 10 bucks each. So you just get a few of those, put them on uh, each camera you have. I'll show you how that looks. It's got a special nub for a, a, for a video camera. Trusty Victorinox Super Tinker, by the way. Everyone should have one if you ask me. But there's the face of the shoe. And this little spring-loaded nub here, when you put it on an SLR, it just pushes it down. And when you put it on a video camera, the video camera has a hole that lines up with this. So this runs lengthwise with the video camera. And it keeps it from rotating around on you. But like I said, you can keep one on your camera body, one on your video camera whatever. What I do is I keep one on my video camera and then uh, I have a spare that I just kind of rotate around. Nice and, as, as nice and portable as this tripod is, I don't use it an awful lot. Um, I prefer the portability of the, the tabletop tripod most of the time. The tabletop tripod is so small and light you can have it with you all the time. I've got the video camera now on a real cheap tabletop tripod, but I can show you this nicer one. This one I recommend to just about every opportunity. This is a Bogan. I think it goes. I think they sell it uh, under the Manfrotto name on uh, uh, Amazon right now. I don't know if they still have this cork pad or if they have a rubber now, but it's got a nice ball head, very smooth, locks down super tight. You can turn this either way and lock it. A sturdy set of just small aluminum legs. They just fold out. And this one I carried with me all over Europe. I didn't take the big tripod with me. I just had this one in the outside pocket of my bag. And if I couldn't find a, you know, a railing or something to put it on that was wide enough, then I could brace it against a, a vertical column. And for self-portraits, there's always a ground you can put it on. You get a slight upward angle, but... That's the price of uh, portability, but this is very solid tripod, and this will uh, easily support an SLR and just about any lens. Just make sure that you, you position it so that the lens is over one leg, no problem at all. Very nice tripod. They still go for about 40 bucks on Amazon. I just checked the other day. Now that number on there, 3009, I think that's the ball head. I don't think that's the legs, but they sell them as a set. Anyway, very sturdy aluminum legs. Um, and as you can see, just use my hand as a size reference here, very small, and uh, you can pretty easily just put that in some you know, pants pocket or, or whatever. And then uh, I guess I can show you my case for the Slick U8000 here. This is one thing about this. Between this and the uh, the big expensive uh, Bogan Gitzo tripods, these legs all come out together, and they do that so that it can have this uh, this triangular bracing, or I should say, three pointed star bracing at the bottom. That's part of what makes it so strong, even though it's lightweight. This head doesn't have to be super strong up here, this uh, plastic support, because it's also braced down here at the bottom. Now this could be a disadvantage if you're shooting on the side of a mountain or something and you have to have one angle up at, a, at an odd angle, uh, one leg up at an odd angle. But remember with this, you don't have to extend the legs uh, to the same extent. You can have one extended all the way 
downhill, and then you can have one just extend partway, uh, you know, further up the hill. So you still have some versatility there, not as quite as, as much as you would have on a one of those super expensive tripods. But this thing, I think Slick says it weighs like less than uh, two pounds, and it's less than two feet long, and just a very good quality, uh, but inexpensive tripod. I don't remember where I got this, maybe Ritz camera, where I worked at the time, but just a basic tripod bag. Adjustable strap, so you can throw this, I've got the strap all the way short as it goes, but you can throw this cross shoulder, but still you can see why most of the time I'd rather carry this than this. Anyway, just something to think about guys, and Slick U8000 if you want a good solid tripod. Um, you know, very versatile uh, for not a lot of money, then uh, that's the way to go. If you need it to be super sturdy for certain times, then just extend the legs all the way, but don't extend the column up. Or use the self-timer if, uh, if the subject's not moving. Thanks for watching.